Hello and welcome back to Manifolds, the video series where we talk a lot about abstract manifolds and very concrete manifolds in Rn. We have already learned the last ones are often called submanifolds. And for these, in Rn, we will introduce the so called tangent space in today's part 19. Moreover, later we will also talk about this concept of a tangent space for abstract manifolds. Indeed, it turns out it's a very important topic for the abstract world as well as for the concrete world of calculations. And in order to understand the motivation, we start with the tangent space for submanifolds. However, before we go into the details, I really want to thank all the nice people who make this video course possible. And these are all the nice supporters on Steady, Patreon, here on YouTube or on PayPal. And please don't forget, as a supporter, you have access to all the videos and you can also download the videos. Moreover, PDF versions, quizzes and exercises are also available. Ok, with that said, we can start with the topic of today and let's begin by discussing a submanifold again. So we already know that Rn with its standard topology is a well-defined manifold. Moreover, there is the standard smooth structure that makes Rn into a smooth manifold. And in this sense we can define smooth manifolds inside Rn as submanifolds. And obviously they can have any dimension k between 0 and n. Ok, and now a good idea to visualize that would be to choose R2 and k as equal to 1. Because then our submanifold M lives in the plane we draw on. And since Rn is a manifold, we already have charts. Moreover, by the definition of a submanifold, we already know that we can choose charts that make the manifold flat. So the picture always looks like that. Locally, we can flatten the manifold. And please don't forget, this map H goes from Rn into Rn. More precisely, it goes from U into U prime, but both sets are subsets of Rn. And now please recall, making the manifold flat essentially just means that the image looks like Rk. All the other components here are put to zero. Ok, and now since H is a homeomorphism, you know you can use the inverse to go the other direction. This inverse here is well defined, but now we have the possibility to restrict it to this Rk. Indeed, then we get a map phi that sends Rk to our submanifold M. And usually we call this map phi a parameterization for the manifold M. More precisely, it's a local parameterization because it only describes a part of the whole manifold. This means we should also put this information into the codomain and the domain. Of course, these are just details. The crucial thing is now that we start with a k-dimensional space on the left and land in the n-dimensional space but we describe the manifold inside it. So maybe let's immediately look at a very simple example here. In fact, let's keep it simple and let's take a one-dimensional example again. And one that comes to mind would be S1, the circle in R2. And then I would say, let's write down a simple parameterization. So the map phi has some domain, but it's one-dimensional, so we only need one variable t. And of course, this variable t is sent to a two-dimensional point now. And now you might know, if we use cosine and sine, we will get a nice description of the circle. And since we have started with smooth manifolds, the resulting parameterization here is also a differentiable map. And it's not too abstract at all, because it's a map from Rk into Rn. So we have derivatives and everything, like we have learned it in multivariable calculus. And this now makes it possible to define this important tangent space. For submanifolds, this is a very concrete space because it should lie in our Rn. And indeed, for each point on the manifold, we will define a tangent space. So for example, for this point here, the tangent space will look like this. So it's a linear space, a vector space, tangent to the point on the manifold. 
So you should see in this picture here, we translate the linear space to the point. This is a common thing you might already know from one dimensional derivatives. Okay, but now of course the question is, how is this tangent space defined? First, let me tell you that we'll use an index p for denoting the point from the manifold. And moreover, I will put the word sub to the t to say that we deal with sub-manifolds here. Hence, this tpm here denotes the tangent space for sub-manifolds in Rn. This is just in contrast to the abstract definition later. Okay, and now the definition here is simply that we look at the range of the differential of phi. Of course, by the definition of the differential, we always need a point. Moreover, this should be the point in the domain of definition corresponding to our p. And I would say, let's simply call it p tilde. So the short definition would be, it's the pre-image of p. Obviously, this is not a problem, because phi is bijective. Okay, so now we have the differential, and now we look at the range of this linear map. In other words, we just put the whole vector space Rk into it. In other words, it's just the range of the Jacobian matrix of phi. Therefore, you can also write Jacobian matrix of phi at the point p tilde, which is phi inverse of p, and then you just multiply all vectors x from Rk from the right hand side to the matrix. Then we get out a lot of vectors in Rn and they form a subspace. So the important message here is, this is a subspace in Rn. However, the input was given by the dimension of the manifold, so by Rk. So you can remember, in general, this Jacobian matrix will not be a square matrix. Okay, there we have it. This is the tangent space for submanifolds in Rn. And in order to get a feeling for it, let's immediately look at an example. Here I want a more complicated one, so let's look at a surface in R3. In fact, this should be a surface given by a graph of a function. In fact, this is something we have already discussed in part 13. So what we need here is a smooth function f defined from R2 into R. And indeed, it's already good enough to have a C1 function. Okay, and now the submanifold M is just a graph surface there. So usually we call it capital G F. And it's simply defined as all the points the function describes. So more precisely, here we have two inputs, X and Y, and one output F of X, Y. Together, they form a point in the three-dimensional space. And if we go through all the points X, Y in R2, we get the whole graph. So not a complicated notion, but it makes a very nice manifold because we only need one chart. Hence, we also only need one parameterization to describe the whole manifold. So in this case, it's indeed a global parameterization. So the map phi is defined on whole R2 and maps into M. And now we already know it should send x, y to the point from the definition above. So there we have our differentiable map phi, and now we can look at the Jacobian matrix. And there, please note, the point p tilde now is just x, y. So not so complicated, and now we can calculate partial derivatives. The first column has the partial derivative with respect to x. So it's 1, 0, and partial derivative of f with respect to x. And please don't forget, this is evaluated at the point x, y. Okay, and then the next column would be the partial derivative with respect to y. So there we have 0, 1, and then the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Okay, so this is the Jacobian matrix, and now we know these two columns here span the tangent space. So this is something you can immediately write down. The tangent space is the span of these two vectors. And of course, here the point P should be given by the point x, y, f of x, y. And then there's not much to do. You write linear span and put in both vectors. Okay, there we have it. This is a very concrete example of a tangent space of a submanifold. 
And with that, you should already see that we want to define a similar thing for abstract manifolds. Because if we were able to do that, we would have linear subspaces and differentials of smooth maps would make sense. And obviously, in the end, that is exactly what we want. We want to be able to do calculus on manifolds and therefore it's essential that we have derivatives. And indeed, we already see this tangent space here helps us to do calculus on submanifolds. Please note, with the tangent space, we have a local linearization of the manifold. This is something we can deal with and something we will discuss in the next videos. So let's meet in the next video and have a nice day. Bye bye.